Good day, and today we're going to look at the literary elements you might find in Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol. Let's start off with symbolism. When we take a look at symbolism, we'll start looking at the characters and then perhaps some of the symbols that the characters might be contained. So we start off with Scrooge. Scrooge is going to contain the symbolism of beliefs and values of Victorian England in the 1800s. After all, he is our main character, so you're going to be seeing a stereotypical character from that time period. Now, Bob Cratchit, the worker of Scrooge, is supposed to be the spirit of Christmas that the author Charles Dickens wanted to see revived in England. Now there's the fireplace that warms Bob, and in the fireplace itself, where we have them working together, you have this warmth felt within those who share and celebrate the season. We also have Marley's chains that we're constantly hearing in the beginning of the story, and his chains would represent the money and priorities that Marley valued in his life while he was living. Now the ghost of Christmas present, a very Santa Claus or a Father Christmas type figure, represents Christmas joy, kindness, generosity, and peace. And when we look at the light coming from the ghost of Christmas past, we see the memories and spirit of Christmas's past. But they also have the cap that is held by the ghost of Christmas past, which is going to represent greed, selfishness, and other actions that would extinguish this spirit of Christmas. When we look at the ghost of Christmas present, we also see two symbols of girl want and boy ignorance. Now, in Victorian times, you would see a lot of very poor uh, or wanting girls and boys. Now, that would be probably, for example, the symbol of boy ignorance, the uneducated working class factory children. And they should be feared because if they remain uneducated, perhaps the country of England would collapse. Now we also have girl want would be the poor children who do not have the common necessities such as housing, food, and clothing, which at the time of writing, Charles Dickens believed was a great atrocity. We also see Scrooge's two different coats and the very colors that they represent. In most of this particular story, you see Scrooge wearing a coat of gray, which would represent Scrooge's cold-hearted, unsympathetic personality. However, at the end, you'll see Scrooge's coat of blazing holly red, which would represent a redeemed Scrooge. He is now caring, generous, and warm-hearted. As we continue through our elements, let's continue into theme. So we look at what are some of the themes that are embedded within a Christmas carol. First of all, people can change. That is expressed as mankind can be redeemed. We can see a change in somebody as cold-hearted as Ebenezer Scrooge. Perhaps if we uh, made that wider into Victorian England, perhaps Victorian England can look back at its Christmases past and actually change and be redeemed. Another theme might be acts of kindness can enrich the spirit and lead to more acts of kindness by others. Unless society reaches out to help those less fortunate and in need, especially children, society would be condemned and doomed in their future. Another theme might be the way man treats others is more valuable than one's possessions. And man's offenses should carry their own punishment. So let's take a look at some of the ways that the author characterizes Ebenezer Scrooge. If we take a look at direct characterization, we might look at the quote, Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, secret, self-contained, and solitary as an oyster. So we take a look at that as direct characterization of Ebenezer Scrooge. We're talking about having a tight-fisted hand where he's not letting go of his possessions and not letting go of his money. And as for the character himself, he is very self-contained, solitary, secret. He stays alone by himself, mostly. There was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should like to have given him something, that's all. 
Now that implies change through characters' speech. Again, when we have Scrooge talking to other characters throughout this story, we're seeing this learning process going on. It takes quite a bit of time and quite a few characters to learn, but we're going to start seeing change through the characters' speech. If they rather die, they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Now again, when we look at Ebenezer Scrooge, when we're looking at this idea of girl want and boy ignorance, he's not worried so much about the future and the children that are not directly his own. He tells us uh, if they would die, they'd better do it right now, that they would actually decrease the surplus population. It actually seems like for him a positive that, that you would have children die. It should be on Christmas Day, I am sure, said Mrs. Cratchit, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. With the character of Ebenezer Scrooge, we can see in the character's uh, dialogues with one another what his character's effect does to the other characters in the story. And before you get to the end, you're going to see a lot of characters like Mrs. Cratchit feeling quite a negative tone towards Ebenezer Scrooge. Nobody ever stopped him in the street to say with gladsome looks, my dear Scrooge, how are you? No beggars implored him to bestow a trifle. No man or woman now or ever in his life inquire the way to such and such a place. Again, we have people commenting on how nobody seems to care that Ebenezer Scrooge has lived and has passed on. We might also look at the actions of Ebenezer Scrooge. When Scrooge says, I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family, it definitely shows a change in character because he had no intention of doing this at the very beginning of the story. But now that he seems to want to help the Cratchit family at the end, we've seen through his actions and through his words, he is definitely a changed character. Another one of his actions, Mr. Scrooge is going to purchase the largest turkey in the poulterer's shops and had it delivered to the Cratchit family. And lastly, if you look at the character's thoughts, Scrooge had been revolving in his mind a change of life and thought and hoped he saw his newborn resolutions carried out in this. Now we take a look at some of the more minor characters, we can also see some ways that the author characterizes those characters as well. Let's start off with Fred. Fred will invite his Uncle Scrooge for Christmas dinner, even though he knows that Scrooge does not like Fred. Fred also restrains himself from yelling or calling Scrooge names. After all, this is an uncle of his, and so he decides to be polite and courteous. Therefore, Fred will welcome his uncle even after he was treated poorly by him. And Fred is going to see Christmas as a time where he profits in personal gratitude rather than in monetary gain. Now, Bob Cratchit, being the poor worker of Ebenezer Scrooge, is not making a lot of money himself. However, he's going to st still slip the two men who are looking for charity. He's going to give them money when he can afford it. He also encourages Fred when he leaves that Uncle Scrooge still deserves another chance. Bob Cratchit will also wish Scrooge a Merry Christmas even when Scrooge doesn't want to hear it. He certainly applauds Fred's positive views on the Christmas season. When Scrooge isn't even around, even though we know he's watching with the ghost of Christmas present, we'll see Bob Cratchit toasting Scrooge, even though he has been treated poorly by Ebenezer Scrooge. And he's not considered all that handsome or all that healthy, and yet still he has this positive outlook on life and on others. When we take a look at the setting, how is it significant to the novel? Well, Charles Dickens, the author, was concerned about the way in which people were treated during the Victorian time period. And therefore, the overall themes are embedded within this story. They're based on the unfair treatment and class separation of the English Victorian time period. However, we can still see these th themes being set in our current time period, even before the Victorian period, uh, in different areas of the world. So even though Charles Dickens said it within a specific time and place, Victorian England in the 19th century, 
Certainly these themes can be applied in current times. So when we take a look at the flashbacks, because we do have the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future taking uh, Ebenezer Scrooge through the Christmas Carol, what flashback helps the reader understand why Scrooge doesn't care for his nephew? When he reveals that his sister has died, he can't quite let go of the fact that his sister is gone. And because of that pain and trauma, he can see his sister in Fred, and therefore he doesn't want to keep reliving that trauma. It's nothing to do with Fred, but that pain and trauma are relived when he sees his nephew. What flashback helps the reader understand why Scrooge doesn't believe in love? Well, Scrooge did actually, in The Ghost of Christmas Past, does have a love. And Belle, his lost love, released him to go to work. After all, instead of seeing the, the gratitude of the Christmas season or the ideal that money can't buy love, we, we see that Scrooge concentrates first and foremost on work, on time, on money, and less on the people around him. So when Bell, his lost love, releases, releases him, you can see why Scrooge doesn't believe in love. And lastly, if we look a little bit at foreshadowing, we can take a look at the beginning of the book of the signals that Dickens is going to use to let the reader know that Ebenezer Scrooge is going to have an unusual evening. First, his a compatriot or his associate Marley's face will appear on the door knocker and he hears things and so he starts checking each room. Now the pictures of Jacob Marley are also throughout the room and when we hear the sounding of chains, doors opening, and the ringing of bells, we definitely begin to get this feeling that Ebenezer Scrooge is being haunted by Jacob Marley. Thank you so much for stopping by to learn about the literary elements that you might see in Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol. If you'd like me to give you an introduction to A Christmas Carol or perhaps go through the chapters, please let me know in the comments down below what else you would like for me to cover about this particular story. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Take care.